Wednesday I showed you the beginning of a protein purification and today I want to show you the end when we freeze our protein. Well actually we don't freeze it, we vitrify it. That might seem just like a terminology jargony thing and we actually do say freeze a lot when we really mean vitrify but there's a really big difference because when we vitrify we add things like cryoprotectant so glycerol um, and we flash freeze it really quickly with liquid nitrogen and this prevents the formation of water ice crystals in our protein so we tend to think of proteins as kind of like these solid blocky things but really there's all these water channels throughout them and if the water freezes um, and then expands um, it's gonna hurt our protein like you wouldn't want things um, like ice to form in your pipes and so we can use similar strategies to prevent um, the ice forming in, in our protein as we can do to prevent it forming in our pipes um, and um, ice forming on our road so let's talk about cryoprotectants and vitrification liquid water ice and water vapor so water in the gas form so in the air they might seem like really different things, but they're actually just different forms or states of the same molecule, H2O. And what they, how they differ is how stuck together they are. So in a solid, the molecules are really stuck to one another, and so they can really just like vibrate in place. In a liquid, they can slide past one another, and in a gas, they're like totally free from one another. What state they're in is going to depend on how sticky they are for one another and also how much energy they have because it takes energy to require to escape from those sticky interactions. As you add energy, you go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, and as you remove energy, you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid. Solid In a solid, the molecules are stuck together and just vibrating, so they can't break free, but they can be stuck together in different ways. So in a crystal, the molecules are in this orderly arrangement. And in a glass, they're amorphous. So they're sh like, they don't have a defined shape and they're disordered. So we can say they're like disordered. So the molecules just kind of freeze in place and where they are. Water's kind of weird in its solid form in that most things are more compact when they're solid because the molecules are like closer together. But the way that water crystallizes in order to best accommodate the desires of every water molecule in the lattice, it actually expands. And so we don't want this to happen inside of our protein because that could cause damage to our protein. And so if we have these ice crystals form while we're trying to freeze our protein, they can damage the protein in the freezing process and they can also make it um, harder for us to like wake up the protein from its hibernation um, and get it to work. In order to promote this vitrification instead of crystallization, we can do a couple of things. We can add cryoprotectants like glycerol and cool it really, really quickly um, so that they don't have time to get into that orderly arrangement. And we can add cryoprotectants like glycerol that can kind of get in between those molecules and make it harder for them to arrange themselves in that short time that you're freezing them. So if you think of this molecular dance, so in a solid, you're like slow dancing, like close together, that awkward, like hugging, shuffly thing. If you're in a liquid, then it's like a swing dance where you can go free from one partner, but then you swing on to another partner. And if you're gas, you run to that door. And then once you're out, there's no more dance partners to try to pull you back in. So you're free. So what we're interested in is the um, so the freezing point is where you go from a liquid to a solid. Um, so it, or you can think of the, the other way where you have the melting point where you go from a solid to a liquid. Um, and you can think of them as basically the same thing, although sometimes they can be slightly different and it's kind of confusing. So you have this freezing point, but then you have this other point called the glass transition temperature. And so this is below the freezing point. It's this point, this range in which instead of forming these crystals, it'll actually just kind of like freeze in place. Um, and so the molecules will form this vitreous glass. So we call this um, vitrification. The way that we can do this is we need to get below that freezing temperature, but we don't, we don't want it to actually freeze. So we do it really quickly. So we kind of like skip over that freezing temperature into the glass transition temperature without giving the molecules the time that they need to organize into a crystal lattice. 
We can do this with the help of liquid nitrogen. So this really, really cold thing. And so heat goes from warmer things to cooler things. Heat from your protein mixture is going to go into the liquid nitrogen. Um, so that freezes or it vitrifies your protein, but it also um, heats up the liquid nitrogen and causes it to become gas nitrogen. That's going to allow us to cool it really quickly. Um, so if we were to cool it slowly, what would happen is the water molecules could kind of like organize themselves into those ice crystals that we don't want. If we go back to our dance and they say, okay, we're going to turn, we're going to do a freeze dance and we're going to turn off we're gonna stop the music at a certain time. And so if they people know ahead, if the dancers know ahead of time what time that's going to be, they're gonna to wanna to get next to, um, get in like their ideal arrangements, like who's next to who and um, all of that sort of thing. But if you don't give them any warning, you just freeze it. Um, you just turn, stop the music and you have to freeze in place. Well then you don't have time to form those networks. So you just wherever you are and you're less likely to have all these clicks and stuff. Freezing quickly helps with that, but there's a fine line between that freezing and that glass. Um, and so we, to try to make it easier, we can add cryoprotectants. So cryoprotectants are going to, they're gonna lower the freezing temperature and they're going to raise the glass transition temperature. So there's um, less of a difference between them. So we don't have to, we can skip over the, freezing into the glass without, um, we have more, um, it's easier to do that basically without having to worry about getting stuck in that, um, freezing zone. And so the way cryoprotectants work, um, is basically a cryoprotectant. It, it can, it's kind of like a, a chaperone if we go back to our dance. So it's kind of like getting in between the different molecules and or the, your different dancers and trying to like break them up. Um, and so the cryoprotectants, they, there's this thing called a colligative property. These are properties that depend on the number of a molecule that you have, and it can be any molecule. So sodium chloride, we add that, um, people often add that to like roads to prevent them from icing because sodium chloride um, serves as a freezing point depressor, just like the glycerol that I add to my proteins does. And so it's because they both have this colligative property as to any molecule that you more you add, the um, lower the freezing point. So the harder it is, um, so the easier it is for the molecules to break free and the colder it has to get for them to freeze in place. And this is, you can think of this as being because those molecules are going to get in between the molecules that would otherwise be crystallizing. So if you have a bunch of um, those extra chaperones in, in your dance, um, if you have more chaperones than dancers, it's gonna be hard for the dancers to link up together. Um, and so we could add a bunch of salt like we do for our roads, but we don't wanna do that to our proteins because proteins, like how they function is dependent on like, the salts around and that sort of thing because they can um, proteins have parts like positive and negatively charged parts that can interact with the salts um, because the salts are have this positive and these negatively charged parts and so we don't want to add a bunch of salt to our protein so instead um, we normally add glycerol um, so this is like the biotemis go-to antifreeze so your classic antifreeze would be ethylene glycol um, but um, we use glycerol. So glycerol is um, really great because it's similar property-wise to water in terms of like it has these OH groups and um, it um, it goes well with water. The protein's not too like what the heck is this? Um, so glycerol is really kind of like a generic good thing to for a protein to um, hang out with. The downside is that it's viscous, so it's really syrupy. Um, and so typically I freeze my proteins with like 10% glycerol. Um, if it's like a um, something like um, an enzyme like a protease or something, you might want to freeze it up to like 50% glycerol um, because those um, their activity is more dependent on that um, and more sensitive. Um, but so 
instead of adding glycerol like it is, um, I start with a 50 or 80 percent solution of glycerol because it's a lot easier to um, pipette. So when you have 100 percent glycerol, it's like impossible to pipette accurately um, because it just like doesn't pipette well or it gets stuck in your pipette tip or it goes further than it should up the pipette tip because it kind of like crawls up the walls with that like surface tension stuff. But if you have <clears throat> like an 80% glycerol solution or even um, a 50%, it acts a lot more like water um, so you can more easily pipette it. Um, so typically, and if I typically have, if I have to do like make a solution with glycerol or whatever, what I'll do is I'll fill the um, like graduated cylinder to the volume of water minus the volume of glycerol I want to add. And then instead of like trying to pipette the glycerol in or whatever, um, like a certain amount, I'll actually like add the pour in the glycerol um, to the graduated cylinder until it reaches the volume I want. Then I'll stick a paraffin over the top and I'll shake it, um, shake it um, like up and down and stuff. And then I'll um, filter it because uh, bacteria really like glycerol too. So you want to make sure you keep those out. Another great thing about vitrification is that because the molecules are kind of staying where they are when you um, quote unquote freeze them. So they will hopefully be like the same when you wake them up. So the protein is still going to be surrounded by the same um, like solute molecules and that sort of thing. So happy freezing. Wait, not freezing. Happy vitrifying.